All right, let's look at operating leases now. So with an operating lease, the lease lasts longer than one year, but doesn't meet one of the five requirements for a finance lease. And even though it doesn't meet finance lease requirements, the asset and liability must be recorded on the lessee's books at lease inception. The lessee being the tenant, the lessor is the landlord. And since this chapter is about liabilities, we're gonna be talking only about the lessee's books. And what makes this a little bit complex is the idea of present value. At lease inception, we said the lessee records an asset and a liability. The asset is known as a right of use asset. And that's because it's recognizing the fact that the lessee is only using this asset, doesn't own it. The asset is owned by the lessor. So the amount of lease liability recorded by the lessee is going to be the present value of the many lease payments. And the present value computation will always require the use of an appropriate interest rate. And the interest rate used in the present value calculation is the lessee's incremental borrowing rate. Unless the lessor's implicit rate is known to the lessee, then use the lessor's implicit interest rate to calculate present value for the lessee's lease liability. Using the implicit rate captures the return that the lessor expects to earn from the lease. And when the lessee knows the lessor's implicit rate, the lessee uses it to calculate the present value of the lease payments instead of using the lessee's incremental borrowing rate. Now they sound the same. You got the incremental rate, you got the implicit rate. What's the difference between the two? Well, the lessee's incremental borrowing rate is the same rate that the lessee would be charged if the lessee were to go out and buy this asset and finance it through a bank, and that rate might be 13% on the exam. But then they'll tell you that the lessor's implicit rate is 12%. So which one do you use? Well, when the lessee knows the lessor's implicit rate, then the lessee uses the lessor's implicit rate and doesn't use the incremental rate. So what's the lessor's implicit rate? What's that all about? Well, if you've ever seen one of these, this is a lease amortization schedule. And if you notice, it starts out with a balance of 33,795 and ends with zero after 10 payments that are exactly the same amount, $5,000. And the payments are made every year. So there's 10 years of payments of $5,000, which is 50,000 in total. But the present value of those payments is only 33,795. Why? Because the lessee's not paying $50,000 all at once today. They're paying a total of 50,000 over 10 periods. But today that's worth 33,795 at an interest rate of, in this case, 10%. So this 10% interest rate is the implicit rate. It's the rate that's built into the payments by the lessor because the lessor is gonna earn 10% over this 10 year period. And at the end, there's gonna be a zero balance left. After making 10 payments, the lessee will not have any liability left at all. Notice how, although each payment is an even $5,000, exactly the same each payment, a portion of the payment represents interest and a portion represents principal. And yet each payment is exactly $5,000. And at the end of 10 payments, there's a zero obligation. The liability ends. And the only way that can happen and come out to an even zero balance at the end is it has to be based on an interest rate. In this case, it's based on a 10% rate. And whatever rate that is that's built into the amortization schedule, that's known as the implicit rate. And if the exam tells you that the lessee knows what the implicit rate was that was used to build the amortization table, then use the implicit rate to calculate the lessee's lease obligation and right of use asset. If the lessee does not know what this rate was that was used to build the table, that's when the lessee uses the incremental borrowing rate. The lessor would always use the implicit rate because the lessor knows the rate that's used to build the table because the lessor makes the table. In any lease, the lessor creates this amortization schedule and gives a copy of it to the lessee, usually on day one, and that's why the lessee is usually aware of the implicit rate because the lessor hands a copy of this schedule to the lessee. So that's why the lessee normally would use the implicit rate 
But if on the exam, the lessee does not know about the implicit rate, then the lessee would have to use the lessee's incremental borrowing rate. Also, look at the date of the first payment right there on 1-1-year-1. One, one, one. So the lease starts on 1-1-year-1 one, 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 and the first payment is immediate on 1-1-year-1. One, one, one. So that $5,000 payment is only principal. There's no interest on that first payment. Why? Because interest requires time. And if you make an immediate first payment, then that payment is principal only, and it would reduce the lease liability by the full amount of the payment. And that's what happens here on one one year one, because the first payment is all principal. So notice how the first payment is immediate, and we reduce the lease obligation by the full amount of the payment. But then the next payment that's made on one one year two, a whole year went by, so now a portion of that second payment is interest and a portion is principal. How do we know how much of that second payment is interest? Well, it's a 10% interest rate. So take the lease balance, which is 28,795, multiply by whatever interest rate is being used. In this case, the implicit rate is being used, 10%, and that's interest of 2879.5. So that portion of the $5,000 payment is interest, and the balance of that $5,000 payment represents reduction of the lease liability. And after that payment on one one year two, the lease liability is down to 26,674.50. So then on the next payment on one one year three, we would start with the lease obligation of 26,674.50 multiplied by the 10% and the interest portion of the payment from one one year three would be 26,6745 and the balance of the payment would be principal. 23,32.55 would reduce the lease obligation from 26,674.50 down to 24,341.95. And we'll continue to do this all the way down until there's no more payments and we end with a zero lease obligation. So all the payments are the same, $5,000. Each payment consists of an interest portion and a principal portion. We reduce the lease liability by the principal portion, by the amount of the payment that doesn't represent the interest. And then at the end, we have a zero balance. And the only way this works is if we build the schedule around an interest rate. And that interest rate, in this case 10%, allows us to calculate the interest portion of each payment. Now, the difference between operating lease rules and finance lease rules is that we don't separately recognize interest expense in operating leases. So you see this interest column here? We're going to calculate the interest each payment, but we're not gonna recognize interest expense separately under operating lease rules. The only expense under operating leases is the $5,000 payment, which we're gonna call lease expense. So very important under operating lease rules, we have to calculate the interest, but we don't separately recognize the interest. Why do we have to calculate the interest then? Because we need to know the interest portion of the payment so we can reduce the carrying amount of the lease liability because otherwise we would be tempted to reduce the carrying amount of the lease liability by the $5,000 every payment. And we can only do that the first time if there's an immediate payment, because if there's an immediate payment, then it's principal only. There's no interest because interest requires time. So after that immediate payment, we reduce the lease liability by 5,000 because there was no time that went by from day one when we signed the lease agreement to day one when we made the first payment. So now the lease obligation is down to 28,795 instead of 33,795. So when we have another payment on one one year two, a full year goes by, 10% interest is applied to the balance of 28,795, and we reduce the lease obligation by the amount of this second payment that doesn't represent interest. And if interest is the 28,790,50, $28, we reduce the carrying amount of the lease obligation by the 2120.5. That's the amount of the payment that doesn't represent interest. So for operating leases, yes, we have to calculate the interest so that we can reduce the right amount of lease obligation, but we don't separately recognize interest under operating lease rules. The only expense on the income statement under operating leases is what? Lease expense. And that would be 5,000 each year, the amount of the lease payment. All right, let's try this. Which interest rate should be used by the lessee in the present value calculation 
of an operating lease. A says the lessee's incremental borrowing rate, always, no. B, the lessee's incremental borrowing rate unless the lessor's implicit rate is known, yes. C, the lessor's implicit rate, always, no, because if it's not known to the lessee, then the lessee wouldn't be able to use it. D, the lessor's implicit rate, if higher than the lessee's incremental borrowing rate, no. Letter B is correct. The lessee uses their own incremental borrowing rate for the present value calculation of the lease obligation, unless the lessor's implicit rate is known and therefore would be used instead. This approach ensures the calculation reflects the most accurate cost of borrowing for the lessee, given the available information. All right, in operating leases, the expenses that appear in the lessee's income statement include, is it A, lease expense, B, interest expense, C, both, or D, neither? And the answer is A, under U.S. GAAP in an operating lease, only lease expense is recognized in the income statement. And lease expense is the amount of the lease payment. Interest is calculated, we know, but not separately recognized on the income statement under operating leases. When we do finance leases, then you'll see that the same amount of interest is not only calculated, but also recognized as a separate expense, but only for finance leases. This question asked in operating leases, the expenses that appear in the lessee's income statement, and the answer would be just lease expense, letter A. And if you need more help with leases or any part of the CPA exam or CMA exam, go to i75cpareview.com. Get yourself on I-75 with me, Darius Clark, because the right teacher makes all the difference.